Hi, I'm David Barry. Welcome to this video abstract in which I'm going to give an overview of the work that I've been doing using fractal geometry to analyze mycelial structures. The motivation behind this work was to add to the existing body of knowledge uh, showing uh, the links between productivity and morphology and fermentation processes. And of course many uh, reproducible relationships have been derived showing for example uh, strong correlations between pellet size and uh, metabolite yield in, uh, in many processes. Uh, the problem or the limitation with uh, these relationships is that they often overlook what's happening at the microscopic level and considering the evidence for uh, metabolite secretion occurring primarily at high full tips this uh, in my opinion represents a, a significant omission. Of course, there have been a number of studies which have considered what's happening at the at the microscopic level. Uh, for example, very image analysis tools have been developed to automatically quantify the hyphal growth unit. The the problem here is that in order to quantify the hyphal growth unit, um, freely dispersed hyphae have to be present such that the uh, individual hyphae can be isolated and counted. Uh, where larger aggregates are present, the morphological parameters used are typically a uh, projected area of circularity and various other interpretations thereof. And of course these reveal very little about the underlying branching behavior. It also means that different uh, metrics are used to quantify different morphologies and as such uh, direct comparisons across different uh, morphological classes are typically not possible. Well, there have been a number of studies which have shown that filamentous microbes can produce what are approximately fractal structures. And the big advantage of fractal analysis from a morphological quantification point of view is that it can be applied regardless of the morphological form that results in a particular process. Uh, there have also been a limited number of studies which have shown that uh, branching behavior can influence fractal parameters. So I was interested in exploring this relationship further to see whether fractal analysis could be used to infer branching behavior within mycelial structures uh, in cases where the hyphal growth unit could not be uh, determined directly. Well, in order to derive relationships between branching behavior and fractal parameters, we obviously have to know what the branching behavior is. And as just discussed, this can be quite difficult to determine experimentally. So we can work around this by simulating the growth of uh, mycelia. So this results in us having a large number of mycelial structures with known growth parameters. And we can then relate branching frequency, for example, with measured morphological parameters. So I used a simple model to simulate the growth of a large number of mycelia and at each stage during their development they were quantified according to two different fractal parameters first being lacinarity and the second being something I've termed the Fourier fractal dimension which varies according to the shape of the mycelial boundary so this constituted a training set within which we had known uh, branching behaviors and fractal parameters a second population of mycelia were then grown with random branching behaviors. Uh, they were quantified in the same way at each stage of their development. And the fractal parameters that resulted were presented to the training set and uh, an estimate of branching behavior returned. And what I found was when averaging over a population of mycelia, the estimated branching behaviors correlated very strongly with the actual branching behaviors. So this fractal analysis represents potentially a very useful tool uh, in morphological quantification and it can be applied uh, regardless of the morphological form that results in a given process. That's everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you find the paper interesting. Um, I hope you find it useful. Um, I will be making the source code I developed available online uh, relatively soon. And of course, if you have any questions on the paper, please do contact me.